Welcome to Take Me to the Cloud, a place for business professionals to hear insights and best practices from industry experts that combine cloud systems, operations, supply chain, and finance. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be discussing how mid-market distributors are struggling to get information on the supply side and the demand side. I'm joined by David, Brad, and Wally, who will introduce themselves. Hi, Kim. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm Dave Crouch. I'm the uh, CEO of Slatwall Commerce. And uh, we do a lot of work with uh, mid-market distributors and manufacturers. And it's a, um, you know, a challenge that we've been seeing for a number of years now where the buying patterns uh, on the B2B side have, have been changing. You know, the traditional, traditional channels of uh, uh, direct sales, um, perhaps distribution, things like trade shows uh, have, um, have been uh, challenged through uh, buyers looking uh, for options on the digital side, uh, looking for some self-service ways to uh, research products, uh, place orders, um, make things uh, easier uh, and self-service for for the uh, for buyers. Um, so it's it's something that's been happening for a number of years now. Uh, certainly, uh, the the challenges over the last uh, year, year and a half, uh, have accelerated that and put additional uh, additional pressure uh, on the on the distribution and manufacturing. Um, and uh, yeah, again, as those more traditional channels have uh, uh, have closed down or become uh, harder to uh, to service, um, and again, buyers looking for uh, buyers looking for the uh, digital channel to be to be open and available to them. Um, so some of the you know some of the things that they're looking for uh, certainly that we see is is product information, right? So um, and and it's uh, it's detailed product information, right? That buyers are now are uh, they're wanting to. Um, find and do that research online before talking to a salesperson uh, or making a call. Um, so they are, they're looking for detailed product specs, um, you know, related products. Uh, they want the ability, you know, to filter and sort and search. So managing that product information is is uh, is a challenge, and getting it online uh, is is always a challenge. You know, we see particularly uh, you talk to uh, to distributors. You know, they're getting product data um, from multiple manufacturers in mu multiple different formats. Perhaps it's going into an ERP system. Um, maybe some of that data uh, it might be missing that they might need on the on the uh, e-commerce side. So data and pr product data is always, uh, always a challenge. Um, and then uh, having the system to be able to display that data uh, uh, on the front end and, again, um, with the appropriate uh, user experience that that buyers are going to be looking for uh, is is really important. Um, you know, Brad, maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, some of the uh, e-commerce functionality. I mean, once you've got the product data there, that's that's great. Uh, but there, um, from there, people are going to want to be able to act on that, right? So uh, perhaps placing uh, quotes or requests for quotes, and 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 at the end of the day, actually placing an order. So maybe you can talk through some of that e-commerce functionality too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and, and what we've seen, especially on, on the product side, is that you know, there tends to be a lot of focus on, uh, you know, getting as much of the catalog online as possible and, and selling, especially to, to new customers. And sort of what gets missed with that is, you know, the easier process, which is, you know, how can we have a digital storefront? Um, that services the existing customers, so people that are already familiar with with, right. with with your business, and do so in a way that makes things easier for them. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that that gets forgotten about it, it, in that process is you know the my account area. You know, so you've got your storefront, and people are searching and they're finding great products and, and all that stuff. But you know, just just the process of going through and and thinking, well, you know, if I'm that customer. Um, you know, what are the, what are the things and, and how do I typically really interact with, with the distributor that I buy from? It's, you know, I want to go in and I want to see, you know, what orders I placed in the last year. Okay. So in the, in the, the account portal, you need an order search, you need an order listing and the ability to maybe have like a printer friendly or an email functionality, right? Really basic stuff. And then maybe you want to see the, the quotes that, that maybe your sales rep has generated for you. So you need, you know, you need that. 
And then little stuff, you know, you want to be able to update your account information, change your password, you know, maybe add another user onto your account so that they can access whatever you've got. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, you know, fully, fully blown out with, with all kinds of, you know, AI and the latest functionality. A lot of times it's just, what are you doing now and how can you use the storefront to make it, to make it more efficient? Um, so, you know, you're sort of you know, taking all those contacts that you get, that you get, that, that come in, um, you know, people emailing you for things or calling up and asking, um, you know, that, that new type of buyer just doesn't want to do that. And they want to, they want to leverage your site as much as possible um, to get in there. And, you know, a lot of that, you know, um, and I know, uh, um, Walt, you've got some, some, some feedback on, you know, and thoughts around like order management and, and how that's important with, you know, um, all the all the new type of ordering that that, that people are going to be doing, and just the the process and the flow internally for for how that's going to work. Yeah, you're exactly right, Brad. I think you know what's interesting is uh, about 20 years ago, a buddy of mine owned a hard goods wholesale distribution company, and what was cool about this company is, first of all, he made a ton of money because back in them days, nobody was doing it. And what was happening was he was the only distributor in town, and everybody had to go to him. Mm -hmm. He he was the guy. Uh, nowadays. Uh, we have more sophisticated buyers. You're the last mile of the supply chain before they uh, we get to that final piece of distribu distribution. And now, because of you know the likes of uh, Amazon and and Apple and other high end uh, uh, commerce sites, they've created this uh, sophistication of the buyer. Not only in what I expect uh, today with my own personal shopping and buying, but as a as a B two B customer, my expectations are through the roof. I want I want to be able to self service. I want to be able to report. I want to be able to see what I can buy. I want to know what I'm eligible to buy. What can be shipped to? What can I get today? What can I get tomorrow? I want tons of information so I can make more informed decisions. And what we've noticed here at uh, with them with some of our our B two B customers is that they're not getting that information. And if they stand up a single uh, a single platform. Uh, and that platform uh, helps them get some information. That's better than nothing. Okay. Um, but what we're still seeing is a lot of people emailing and a lot of people not putting any money or time or effort and feel that the expense on that front end is just an expense. And our argument and where we can test most of that usually with our customers is they're already doing it. You're already entering the order. Why not allow your, your consumer to self-service? And our consumers are more sophisticated. We as on the B2B side, as the, as the B2B and the wholesale distributors, they have to bump up their game. They have to step up. They have to get better. And I know you guys have some good customers in this space as well where you're, you're thinking about it. And Dave, just for a moment, we'll like hand it back to you before we uh, close out on this one. Think of some ways that you're helping your customers drive your platform Right where you're, it's not about the platform per se. It's more about how are you helping them in the processes. Maybe just ramble a little bit about that, and then toss it over to Kim as we uh, we close out on our first session. Yeah, I think one of the keys is uh, you know to to tackle this in phases, right? Particularly if you're you're coming into this digital channel uh, for the first time. Um, you know, Brad kind of uh, talked about it. You don't need every bell and whistle and it doesn't have to be a 12 month project that costs you know a million dollars there are ways to kind of bite through this in smaller chunks you know like uh, uh you know a recent customer and you know, a huge win for him was just the ability to pay for orders he had he was wasting so much internal time chasing down payments um you know he had two or three people on the phone all day long um and just giving his clients the ability to log in see an order and put a put a payment in right whether that's a credit card or ach or you know even the po number at least um was uh you know was a huge huge win so it doesn't have to be every bell and whistle and full-blown e-commerce there can be these little you know like you said wally self-service uh pieces that can save huge amounts of time and resources uh be a huge win for the customer let's make it easy for me to do business with you right that's what this is at the end of the day that's going to drive drive more business and more, and then just layer on top of that, right? Um, kind of tackle it uh, piece by piece in phases. This was a great discussion about how digital channels really help ease um, several perspectives. So on the buyer side, the operational side, as well as the customer service side. So that way companies can 
service our customers more efficiently and effectively as well as save financial costs. Thanks for tuning in. You've been listening to Take Me to the Cloud. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to be alerted of new episodes. For more information, visit witham.com.